Hi everyone, this is the first video on circle as a conic section. Before I go into the detailed discussion on circle as in coordinate geometry, I wanted to cover a few fundamental concepts about circle and this is that video and after this I am going to create a few more videos to cover a few basic theorems on circle and after that we will move on to the conic section discussion on circle. So let's get started. In this video, I think it would make sense to start with the definition of circle. First we need to understand what a circle is, right? Here I have a formal definition of circle. A circle is a closed figure on a plane whose boundary is the locus of a moving point that maintains a fixed distance from a fixed point. So two things we have to understand. First of all, a circle is a closed figure on a plane. That means it's a two dimensional figure. That means it is a two dimensional space and it is bounded by the locus of a point that maintains a fixed distance from a fixed point. Here I have a pink dot on the screen. Let's assume that that is the fixed point. If we plot the locus of a point maintaining a constant distance, then let's see how that looks like. For a moment, please assume that the dotted line over here, that is the locus of that moving point, which is at a constant distance from the fixed point, which is the pink color point at the middle of it. If we pick a point, let's say point on the right hand side, that point has a certain distance from the pink dot from the fixed point. And now if we pick another point, for example, say suppose we pick another point, that point's distance is also same as the previous point. That means each of these dots on the boundary, they have the same distance from the fixed point, which is the pink color point. And if we have to name the distance, we can say, well, this can be denoted as lowercase r units. You can even use uppercase r. For now, I'm going to use lowercase r. So let's assume that this distance from the pink dot to the light green dot, this distance is r units. Now, if we also pick another point, there also it is the same distance from the pink dot at the middle of it. And this distance is also equal to r units. Let's pick a couple more points. And in every case, the distance from the fixed point is actually r units. And that is how I have plotted these points here. Now, if you look at this boundary and if you fill in the gaps with more points, which are all at the same distance from a fixed point in the middle of this space, then you can imagine that this is actually looking like a circle. Now, the question here is, is the boundary the circle or is this entire space bounded by this curved line is the circle? Well, let's take a look at the real picture of a circle. So, so far, I hope you are able to understand that the locus of the point is going to look like this if it maintains a fixed distance from a fixed point. So, the light green colored dotted line, that is the locus of that moving point, which is always at a constant distance from a fixed point and the fixed point is actually in the middle of it. And that fixed point is actually called the center of the circle. And the fixed distance from that fixed point, that distance is actually called the radius of the circle. And it is usually denoted by lowercase r. Sometimes it could be denoted by uppercase r also. But it's the radius of the circle, which is the distance between the fixed point and the moving point. In this case, we can say the distance between the fixed point and the boundary of the circle. Now, I'm going to replace this diagram with a simple diagram of a circle. So let's have a look. Here I have a clear picture of a circle where the boundary kind of looks like this. The circle is not just the boundary. The circle is the space enclosed by this boundary. So how would the circle look like? As you can see in the diagram, the entire pink region, that is the circle. Because circle is a two dimensional space. It is a closed figure and it is on a plane. So it is a plane figure. It is a two dimensional space and it is bounded by the locus of a moving point that maintains a fixed distance from a fixed point. So it has a specific boundary. However, the boundary itself is not the circle. The circle is the space that kind of looks like this. And in the middle of this space, there is a center of the circle and that is the fixed point of course. And the distance of the boundary from that fixed point is the radius of the circle. And what is the name of the boundary? Well, the boundary is usually called the circumference. Here the light green color boundary, just for visual representation, I have kept the color separate. But actually the boundary is also part of the circle and the boundary is actually a line that has no thickness, right? That is the definition of a line. Many times when people say circumference, we consider that the length of this boundary is the circumference. And in fact, in most mathematical problems, that will be the concept that we are going to use. That whenever someone says circumference of a circle, that means is the length of the boundary. But by definition, circumference is nothing but the boundary. But in general, when we say circumference, we understand that we are talking about the length of the boundary. 
I hope the concept of a circle is clear now. Next we are going to talk about another term called arc. So let's see what an arc is. By definition an arc is nothing but a portion of the circumference. Now there are three types of arc. If the size of the arc is exactly half of the circumference then it is called the semi-circumference. And if the size of the arc is less than semi-circumference then it is called the minor arc. And if the size of the arc is greater than the semi-circumference then it is called the major arc. Now let's take a diagram here to understand these concepts. Suppose we have a circle like this even though I have not colored the interior space there but please assume that this two dimensional closed space is the circle and here I have highlighted one portion of the circumference in pink color and that is actually the semi circumference. If it is exactly half the size of the boundary then it is called semi circumference. Next let's suppose we have an arc like this where I have painted with a red color and the size of this arc being less than semi circumference this will be called a minor arc. Now what about the remaining portion of the circumference? Well the remaining portion will be called a major arc because the size of the remaining portion is actually greater than the semi circumference so the remaining portion will be called the major arc. I hope the concept of arc is clear. Next we are going to talk about chord. So let's see what a chord is. A chord is nothing but a line segment joining any two points on the circumference of a circle. Now let's try to understand the through a diagram. So suppose we have a circle like this and the center is the yellow dot there and if we pick any two points A and B like I have the pink dots there on the circumference to denote the point A and point B and if we join these two points by a line segment that will be called a chord of this circle. So this pink line segment is a chord. Now what if the chord goes through the center? Can you draw a chord like this that will go through the center? Of course we can. We can pick two points in such a way that the chord will go through the center and in that case the chord will be called the diameter. So the red line there that is actually the diameter and it is actually the largest chord of the circle. A diameter is the largest chord of the circle. All other chords will be smaller than the diameter. So in this case the red line CD is the largest chord which is also the diameter of this circle. And what would be the size of the diameter? Well diameter will be two times the radius because if you imagine the center to be O then OD is radius and OC is also radius that means CD will be equal to radius plus radius that will be two times the radius. So the diameter of a circle is essentially two times the radius and I have noted that on the right hand side that D is equal to two times R. Now here I have used the uppercase R to denote radius but you can use the lowercase R also really does not matter. Next we are going to talk about secant line and tangent. A secant is a straight line that intersects the circle at two distinct points. First we will take a diagram to understand the secant line and after that we will talk about tangent. Let's suppose we have a circle like this and here I have drawn a straight line which intersects the circle at two distinct points and if we want to locate those two points they will be like this. We can say this is point A on the left hand side here. I am writing in pink color and then this is point B. So those are the two distinct points where this straight line is actually intersecting the circle. So this straight line is called a secant or secant line and actually it is a straight line. It extends all the way to infinity. So it is not just a line segment unlike chord where chord is a line segment but second is not a line segment. Second is a straight line that goes in both direction all the way to infinity. However, it cuts the circle at two distinct points. So you have to understand the difference between secant and chord very clearly that chord is a straight line segment whereas secant line is a straight line that extends to infinity. Next let's talk about tangent. Well tangent is again another straight line that intersects the circle at only one point. Now when I say intersect you can in fact replace that word with touches. You can say a straight line that touches the circle at only one point. It touches the circle at a single point. Now how is that line going to look like? Well it could be something like this. I have a yellow straight line down below and as you can see there let me use a red color dot here that the straight line actually touches the circle at the red dot let's say this is point P. So I have located a point on the circle where that yellow line kind of touches the circle. So that line will be called a tangent line. It is almost like a secant line but it's a limiting condition of the secant line. The secant line cuts the circle at two distinct points whereas the tangent line touches the circle at a single point. 
and in both the cases i mean the secant line and the tangent line they both extend to infinity they are not just any small line segment they are actually straight lines extending to infinity however secant line intersects the circle at two points whereas the tangent line touches the circle at one point the point P where the tangent line touches the circle also has a special name it's called the point of contact and also it is called the point of tangency. So if an author says the point of tangency you know which point we are talking about it is a point on the circle through which a tangent line has been drawn and also if another author says point of contact then also you have to imagine a point like P where there is a tangent line that touches the circle. I hope we are clear about the concept of secant line and tangent line. Next we are going to discuss about another concept called sector. So let's see how a sector looks like. As per definition a sector is a portion of a circle bounded by two radii and their intercepted arc. Let's take a diagram and it will be clear from the diagram. Let's suppose we have a circle like this and let's suppose the light green dot in the middle of it is the center of this circle and from there let me draw two radii and then I'm going to fill in that little space the V type of space there I'm going to fill that in with a color and the portion of the circle that you see here the yellow portion that is called a sector and because this sector is formed by two radii and a minor arc this sector is also called a minor sector. So then you are thinking that what would be a major sector? Well the major sector will be the remaining portion. For example if I color the remaining portion with a different color you see the pink portion here that is actually a major sector. So let me make a note here. I hope the concept of sector is clear now. Now another thing I am going to discuss here is how to find the area of a sector of a circle. Let's focus on the minor sector there. Let's assume that this minor sector let's assume that the minor arc forms an angle theta at the center and it is theta radian not degree here the calculation will happen on radian. So if we have a sector like this then what would be the area? I mean I am talking about the yellow shaded region. What would be the area of this sector? Well let's try to find that out. We know the area of a circle is pi r squared. If the radius of the circle is lowercase r units then the area of the circle would be pi r squared and this pi r squared area is actually covered by 2 pi radian angle at the center. So 2 pi radian angle covers an area of pi r squared and then if we simply use the unitary method then we can say 1 radian covers pi r squared over 2 pi square units of area. And now if we convert that into theta we can say well then theta radian will cover how much space? Well that would be pi r squared over 2 pi times theta and that will be equal to half times theta r squared. This will be the formula for the area of a sector where the arc makes an angle theta at the center. I hope things are clear up to this point. Next we are going to learn another concept called segment. The definition of a segment is like this. It is actually a portion of a circle bounded by an arc and its chord. So here we have a chord involvement right. So let's first take a diagram. Suppose we have a circle like this and let's suppose we have a chord like this. Let's suppose this is A and B. So AB is the chord and as you can see there are two sides of this chord right. On one side we have a smaller portion of the circle and the other side we have a larger portion of the circle. So each of these portions would be called a segment. Now first I am going to show you the minor segment which is actually the portion of the circle between the chord and the minor arc. The yellow shaded portion is called the minor segment. Now what would be the major segment? Well it will be the remaining portion right because the remaining arc is the major arc. So the portion of the circle covered by the chord and the major arc that will form the major segment and I am going to highlight that with a pink color and that is the major segment. So the yellow shaded portion is the minor segment and the pink shaded portion would be the major segment. I hope the concept of a segment is clear. Next we are going to discuss about central angle and inscribed angle. Let's suppose we have a circle like this having center at the point O and let's suppose we have a minor arc like this the arc AB. The yellow portion of the circumference is the minor arc here and if we connect the center with the points A and B then we are going to have a picture like this. And here you see OA and OB they actually form an angle. The angle enclosed inside the minor arc right. So that angle is called a central angle. So here if I denote this angle as theta so this angle will be called the central angle subtended by the minor arc AB. Now what is an inscribed angle? 
to show you an inscribed angle i took a point c on the major arc there and now i am going to connect a and b with c so it's going to look like this and here the angle acb which is denoted here by alpha that angle is called the inscribed angle so alpha is the inscribed angle subtended by this minor arc and theta is the central angle subtended by the minor arc now why central angle because it is the angle formed at the center and then inscribed angle will be the angle formed in the other arc in the opposite side arc so if we are talking about an inscribed angle for a minor arc the angle will actually be formed on the major side of the arc the major arc and similarly if we are talking about a major arc then the inscribed angle will be formed on the minor side on the minor arc i hope things are clear up to this point next we are going to discuss about angle subtended by a chord let's suppose we have a circle like this having center at the point o and we have a chord ab so what will be the central angle here well the central angle will be the angle theta that is the angle aob it's the angle subtended by the chord at the center and now if we take a point on the major arc let's say the point is c and if we connect a and b with c then the angle that will be formed at the point c that angle will be called the angle subtended by the chord on the major arc or normally it is called the angle subtended by the chord now when we talk about angle subtended by the chord we always assume that the angle that we are talking about is the angle on the major arc so here i have denoted that by alpha so alpha is the angle subtended by the chord and theta is the central angle subtended by the chord now let's take a point d on the minor arc and now if we connect a and b with d then it's going to form an angle like that here i have denoted by beta so angle beta will be the angle subtended by the chord on the minor arc next we are going to discuss about concentric circles as you can see from the name itself it says concentric that means a bunch of circles having the same center and of course the radius has to be different otherwise they all will become the same circle so if we have a few circles having the same center but different radii then those circles will be called concentric circles let me take a diagram here let's suppose we have a circle like this and on top of that i'm going to draw another circle and then i'm going to draw another circle even though i'm not filling in the interior space please assume that when we say circle a circle is actually the entire space within that boundary right so here if we have three circles like this they will be called concentric circles they have different radii but their center is same all three of them share the same center so these circles will be called concentric circles next we are going to discuss about congruent circles what are congruent circles well it is a group of circles can be two or more circles having same radii they don't have same center of course because if they have same center they will become concentric circles but in this case we are talking about congruent circles they will be circles with different center but same radius let me draw a few circles here here i have three circles in the diagram and each of them has a different center however their radius is equal each of these three circles has the radius as r unit so different circles having same radius are called congruent circles or sometimes you know they are also called equal circles like we have learned the concept of congruent triangles here also the similar concept it's similar looking circle just their center is at different location however they have same radius that means they cover the same two dimensional space so they are called congruent circles or equal circles next we are going to talk about semicircle let's see how a semicircle looks like a semicircle is exactly half of a circle which is bounded by a semi circumference and diameter let's take a diagram here let's suppose we have a circle like this and now if we draw a diameter like this the diameter would divide the circle into equal halves so the portion of the circumference above the diameter or below the diameter that portion will be a semi circumference and now i'm going to fill in half of the space here with a different color and i'm going to erase the other half so the two dimensional shape that you see here this is called a semi circle now semi circle is exactly half of a circle so its area would be half of the area of the circle so if the circle's area is pi r squared then the area of the semi circle would be half of the circle that would be half of pi r squared so let me make a note here that the area of the semi circle would be half times pi r squared now what would be the length of the boundary of the semi circle well we know that the length of the circumference of a circle is actually 2 pi r where r is the radius of the circle now in this case what would be the length of the semi circumference well semi circumference will be like this 
half times the full circumference so that will be just pi r this will be the length of the semi circumference but if you think about the boundary of the semi circle it includes the semi circumference plus the diameter we cannot forget the diameter portion right that is also part of the boundary of the semi circle we are talking about the boundary of the semi circle so the boundary includes half of the circumference of the original circle and also the diameter both of them make up the boundary of the semi circle so the boundary length of this semi circle would be the length of the semi circumference which is pi times r plus the diameter which is actually 2 times r so this will be equal to the length of the boundary of this semi circle and if we simplify this this will look like r times pi plus 2 so this is the formula for the length of the boundary of a semi circle and here of course r is the radius of this semi circle and what would be the area of the semi circle well the area will be half times the area of the full circle that is half times pi r squared Also I have made a note in yellow color here where I have said circle r comma pi r square comma 2 pi r now what that means well r is the radius of the circle then the area would be pi r square and the length of the circumference would be 2 pi r that's for a full circle not semi circle that's for a full circle i hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video